Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz, and I uh, want to go through some lovely anatomy of the brain on MRI. And uh, just looking at this series of cuts here, you can tell that you're kind of going through the midline. So I'm going back and forth here, and this would be the most midline, which I think you can see. And so what structure is this? Well, it's the corpus callosum. And this is called the rostrum. I'm sorry, the rostrum is right here. This is the genu. This is the body. And this is the splenium. So the rostrum is the most rostral part, but it's kind of hooked around there. So it's this part. This is the genu, meaning the knee, kind of bent like a knee. This is a body. And this is splenium. Splenium, body, genu, rostrum important parts of the corpus callosum. Now look how different this looks than the brain substance around it. Of course, as you go out to the side, you see how it blends imperceptibly with what? The white matter. Here the gray matter, the cortex, is kind of grayish in color, and the white matter actually is kind of white. All of this white matter in the subcortical area of the hemisphere goes to various locations, and a large part of it courses from one side to the other. And here you can see the convergences in the corpus callosum. Hopefully that's not too bad. So this is where all of those fiber tracks course. So what you're seeing here is this tremendous set of compacted fibers, millions of fibers coming from one hemisphere to another. And there's my friend Natasha. <laughs> and here you can see this is temporal lobe. So that makes this fissure what? The sylvian fissure. And look here how you follow the temporal lobe back. And you follow it far enough back and you're going to find yourself in the occipital lobe right here. And also look at how the temporal occipital area is separated from this cerebellar hemisphere. By what? There's just a little black line. What's in there? It's the tentorium. The tentorium, a sheet of dura. And notice how that sheet of dura, the tentorium, communicates with and blends imperceptibly with the margins of this sinus, this venous sinus. This is the transverse sinus. And if we go to the midline, you don't see it well, but there's a straight sinus here that comes back. There's a superior sagittal sinus here that converges right in this area. And then from this area, the torcula, it's called, the transverse sinuses go off to each side. So here is one on one side. Of course, it would be nice if we had an MRV of that, but you can see where the structure is. And see how it's tucked in there right at the posterior margin of the tentorium. So we'll see that on both sides. And what do we see here? This is a brain stem. Beautiful view of the brain stem. Now, this is the foramen magnum. You have the inferior margin of the clivus, that's this bone here, and the inferior margin of the occipital bone here. So this is an opening, the big hole, which they decided not to call the big hole because it doesn't sound very medical, so they called it foramen magnum, which means big hole. And here you have the medulla. And by definition, as soon as you get to the big hole, it becomes the spine, the uh, spinal cord. So here you have medulla, and then you get up to the pons. So this is pons, and this is a pons is Latin for bridge, and that's because the cerebellum, unlike the cerebral hemispheres, represents the body ipsilaterally. So the right side of the body is represented in the right cerebellar hemisphere, but in the left cerebral hemisphere. And because of that discrepancy, there is a need for a large amount of crossing fibers just at the same level as the cerebellum. And that is what this uh, pons accompanies, accomplishes. rather. So this is the pons. So you have the medulla, pons, and midbrain. And midbrain has two parts. This is all midbrain here. One part is called the midbrain tectum, which is right here. And the other is the midbrain tegmentum. And it may be hard to see, but there's a little channel right here between the midbrain tectum and midbrain tegmentum. And that's where cerebrospinal 
fluid, CSF, comes from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. You can kind of see that there, I think. So here you have the midbrain tectum, and there's a little opening from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, and that is the cerebral aqueduct. That's where the cerebral aqueduct is located. So this is where the midbrain tectum is, also called the, the uh, quadrigeminal plate, because it has two superior colliculi at this level and two inferior colliculi at this level. Superior colliculi are related to vision, inferior colliculi are related to hearing. Okay, so here's all midbrain, and midbrain tegmentum is where the, cere the cerebral peduncles emanate to go to both hemispheres. So most of the information coming to and from the cerebral hemispheres comes down through the cerebral peduncles, converges in the midbrain, midbrain here, and then gets routed up and down the spinal cord as well as to the cerebellum as needed. So look over here. Here you have the sphenoid sinus, black, containing air, no signal. And here you have the cella tersica. I think it's called the cella tersica, something like the, the camel's saddle or something like that. And it contains the pituitary gland. So here is bone in the cella tersica, and there's the pituitary gland, nicely demonstrated. This brighter signal here is the posterior pituitary. And the less bright signal here is the anterior pituitary. Now sometimes you can see a nice pituitary infundibulum coming from here to the pituitary. I don't really see it right here. But that's because the hypothalamus is right around here and that comes down to modulate the pituitary. Now you know that when a cellar mass, especially a pituitary mass, becomes sufficiently large it grows up here into the supracellar cistern. And what's the first thing it's going to encounter? The optic chiasm, which is what you're seeing here. Okay, you can go to one side of it, and you see the internal carotid artery in the cavernous sinus. So here it is entering the cavernous sinus, doing a little sigmoid S shape, and then exiting the cavernous sinus on one side. Now let's go to the other side, going across. Here we go. Internal carotid artery doing that on both sides. So look at that now. You're on one side. You cross over to the midline. You have the pituitary optic chiasm. Nice midline views of the posterior fossa, including the brain stem and cerebellum. And then you go over farther, and you're in the uh, cavernous sinus here, and you see the cavernous internal carotid artery. This is actually the oculomotor nerve. This is the third cranial nerve that controls, controls most of the extraocular muscles, and it goes into the cavernous sinus before it gets to the eyeballs. Okay, we just happen to catch that nicely right there. And then this, of course, is the optic nerve, which is the second cranial nerve. And that comes back to the thalamus, where it connects and then relays to cerebral cortex, the visual cortex specifically, and that's back in the occipital cortex. Okay. Well, that's enough for now.